This is a tutorial on this keyword, literally this. When you instantiate an object, you can refer to it with the variable name that you assign to it. If you instantiated a car object and assigned it to the variable, for example, Subaru, you can access the methods inside the object by using the object operator and the method name. If you instantiate an object inside another object, you will do the same thing. But what if you need to reference a method or property inside the object itself? That's where this, the keyword, comes into play. It just means that it's referencing itself. If you considered yourself the object and you wanted to access yourself, you would use the I pronoun. If the object wants to access itself, it uses this. In order to use this keyword properly, what I'm going to do is go back to our previous tutorial and build off on top of that. So let me grab this dog class. And I'm going to paste it inside this file. Well, we have our constants, we have some of the properties, and we have some of the methods inside here. I guess the best way to show you how to use this is by creating another couple of methods. So let's say we get public function. And let's say, since we're trying to reference ourselves, so imagine if we're the object, we're trying to reference ourselves, we would say something like get eye color. Like that would be a reasonable name that somebody might want the access of the objects. How do we return? So far we've just been echoing or returning something, right? So for example, we could say green. Well, we know this object has the eye color property. What we need to do is somehow access this property and have it return brown. Well, like I said earlier, you do this by doing using this as the keyword and then we can just specify the property name. So there we are, we're returning this eye color. Let's go ahead and test that out. So what we'll do is we'll say something like GS dog is equal to new dog. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, since all of these properties are pertaining towards a German Shepherd. This is actually probably a poor name for the class. We'll go ahead and rename it to German Shepherd, and then we're gonna instantiate new German Shepherd. So that way, if this was an abstract dog, you would have to set all of these. Ooh, class mammalia, what did I mess up on here? Phylum actually needs to be Cordata. What was I thinking? You guys, let me go three, four full tutorials and you didn't correct me? That's craziness. So yeah, we're accessing German Shepherd Dog with new German Shepherd. And then if we wanted to call this uh, method inside here, we've already done it before. But since it's returning something, and if we wanted to display it to the screen, we would say echo. So echo GS Dog object operator. And then what do we want to get? Well, we want to get the eye color. So when we call the eye color, it's just going to return eye color property, which is listed right there. Let's go ahead and open this up in our browser. Okay, and there we have it. It says brown. Let's do a couple more examples. So what we can do is create another function. So public function. So we can ask it, does shed. Does the dog shed or the German shepherd. So up here we have our does shed property. Down here we have our does shed method. And all we're going to do is return. Well, actually, instead of returning true or false, we want to return something in English, for example, yes or no. So let's use our ternary operator and then return if this does shed property is equal to true. So if this does shed property, which is right there, then what we want to do is return yes. Otherwise, we want to return no. Then we could say something like, for example, echo does the German shepherd shed question mark, and then dot, well, actually let's put a space, dot does or gs dog does shed method. So now we should either get yes or no. And I'm also going to go ahead and right here add a break tag just so it appears underneath. Go ahead and click refresh. And there we go. Does the German Shepherd shed? Yes. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more semi-complicated example, I guess, 
compared to what we've been doing. So we'll say public function get scientific classification. And all we want to do is return an array that contains all of these right here. So how would we do that? Well, we would return an array. And inside the array, we can make this an associative array. So we could say kingdom this kingdom we assign to this key this value so this is not referencing the object this but i'm just pointing it out like pointing out this keyword right here and to attach it to this value we use this keyword point it to the kingdom property and then we can continue on for example we have file this file we have class, this class, order. So when we call this method, it's gonna return this array. What can we do with this array? Well, it's just like any other array. We can loop through it, we can access different elements inside there, whatever. But what we wanna do is just do a var dump. So let me just go ahead and do a var dump of this, or oh, not this, GS dog, and then get scientific classification. So we're gonna call that method inside our var dump, and we just wanna see it return this entire array of data. Let's go ahead and click refresh. And there we have it, our entire scientific classification returned as an array. Let's go ahead and do another example. This time I'm gonna copy over our class car and I'm gonna paste it inside here. Again, just to kind of recap, we have our constants up here. We have some properties and then we have a few functions. And instead of creating new functions, I think what I wanna do with this one, since I talked about this parameter in the last tutorial, how it's not actually a good place for it to be placed. So what we're going to do is actually modify each one of these methods right here and place this parameter actually as a property. So we'll go ahead and start this thing off by introducing a new property and is car on is probably a good enough name. So right here we're going to be storing a boolean value. I know we looked at strings, floats, and integers up here, but this is boolean of just holds true or false. And is car on. Or actually, car on. We'll just say it like that. And we'll initially set that to false. So then what can we do, for example, with this turn on? Well, we can change this right here from false to true, right? So that's what turn on would mean. Turn off would change this to false if it's true. And then drive would check to make sure that this is on. That means the turn on method has been called. And if it is on, then it's going to start, you know, you're going to be able to drive. Otherwise, you're going to have to turn it on. So let's turn on with the turn on function. First thing I would do is check to make sure that the car is not on already. So we could say something like if this car on, if it's true, return the, and then we can reference our properties using this keyword as well. So there's our make. So this make dot space, this model dot is already on else we can do something else, or we don't actually have to use the else statement inside here because we're returning something. And if this returns, remember, like I said before, nothing else will execute after this point on. So we can actually do something in here. It makes my code, you know, personally, I think it makes it look a little bit cleaner than using a bunch of if else statements. It's exactly like saying else. So if this car is on, return this. And it's basically gonna exit this statement. If this is set to false, then what we wanna do is say this car on is equal to true. So we just wanna set that equal to true. And then we wanna say this make space dot this 
model has been turned on. We just want to give it some kind of confirmation. Let's go ahead and do a similar thing and it turn off. So again, we'll check to see if this car on, if it's true, well then we want to turn it off. So then we'll say this car on is equal to false. And then we're going to return the this make dot space this model has been turned off. Otherwise, if it's already off, we just want to return the this make dot this model that is already off. A little bit of reverse kind of logic between these two. The only reason why we have to do it that way is just because we're using true inside both of these if statements. So I just kind of want to show you some different types of programming options as well while we're doing these tutorials. Now let's go ahead and work on the drive method. We can say now if this car on is set to true and we can completely remove this argument from here. Echo, I'm driving. Otherwise, it's going to say, you got to turn me on. So that one was pretty simple to modify. So let's go ahead and instantiate a new car. Let's call this one a Subaru. Subaru is equal to new car. And then we're going to have to set at least the make the Subaru. And the model is equal to WRX STI, of course. So now we can start playing with these methods. So let's say the first thing we want to do is drive. What do you think is going to happen? So I'm going to go ahead and echo out some things uh, right here. Actually, since all of these are returning, I think I'm also going to return this. Just so it doesn't get confusing down here. So these two statements are returning something. So we want this one to return something as well. Oh. Drive this drive. Then what we're gonna do is put a little brake tag. Then or not this, sorry. Subaru. We're not within the object itself. Now we're outside of the object and we're trying to reference it. Alright. Well, now we're gonna try to turn it on. So Subaru turn on. Brake. And we're going to echo drive again. And this time Subaru drive. Then we'll echo turn on again to see how that works. And Subaru turn on. And then let's see what another what's another good one. So echo turn off right now. That would be good. Subaru turn off. And now let's try driving while the vehicle is off. Subaru drive. And last but not least, let's try turning it off again while well, it's already off. And let's see what we get. So I'm going to space these out just a little bit to make it more clear what we're doing. And let's go to the browser. Hit refresh. So first time we want to try to drive, it says you got to turn me on. And then we turn on the Subaru. It says Super WRX. SDI has been turned on. Then you call drive function again. It says I'm driving now. Then you try to turn it on again. It says the WRX is already on. Then we try to turn it off and it says it's been turned off. Then we try to drive while it's been turned off and it says you got to turn me on. And finally, since it's already off, we're going to try to turn it off again. It says the Subaru is already off. So as I was doing this, I was purposely writing out this make and this model constantly over and over again. Most of the time I would do some kind of helper function inside here, which only functions within the class would access. So what we want to do is we want to create another function 
So we'll say get, make, and model. So that's what we want to do. And all we want to do is return this make dot space this model. So now we can access this uh, get make model outside of the class. So we can call it here if we wanted to. We can say something like echo car and then Subaru get make a model. I can go back, hit refresh. It says Subaru WRX SDI is our car, but we can also use this inside the class itself. So for example, right here, as you can see, these two lines of code are identical. So we can just replace it by calling this method. So we don't always have to call a property using the this keyword. We can also access other methods inside this class. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it every single place where it says something like that. Okay. So now we don't have any more unnecessary this make this model is just repetitive. We can go back, test it out, hit refresh, and you can see already loaded and nothing has changed, which is exactly what we wanted. So just remember when it comes to this keyword, the object is just referencing itself. If you're having trouble visualizing it, it's like when you use the pronoun I to reference yourself.